Hello, my name is Bilal Sukkar. In this uh, video, I'm going to introduce the diffusion responsibilities model or macro adoption model E. This uh, uh, macro adoption model is one of five models. If you like uh, to watch an overview of all five, please uh, refer to the introduction video using the video link at the bottom right. Macro adoption models uh, are published in collaboration with Dr. Mohamed Qasem from Teesside University. So what is a, a diffusion responsibilities model and why is it uh, needed? Uh, if we think uh, of uh, diffusion of something uh, like BREM across a market, uh, this is undertaken by, undertaken by different stakeholders. Uh, this model identifies uh, these uh, stakeholders uh, for two reasons, either to assess their contribution towards the uh, diffusion, or if uh, there's a policy maker uh, intending of uh, generating a policy, this model will also help uh, the policy maker to identify the different stakeholders in order to assign uh, responsibilities to them. The model uh, uses uh, the BIM fields, uh, which was introduced earlier in a separate uh, video, uh, to identify nine different player uh, groups. Uh, please refer to the BIM fields uh, video, uh, which really uh, covers uh, an interlocking uh, policy process and technology fields. Now, if you remember from that video that uh, these fields could either cover players or uh, their, their deliverables or their requirements, in this instance, we are covering players. And these fields overlap, and in the overlap, there are areas which will also help us identify different types of players. So let's start by identifying these players. The first uh, player to be identified is policy makers or governments, which play a key role, of course, in mandating uh, certain systems, uh, certain processes, standards, etc. The second player to be identified are the education institutions, which uh, also play an important role by developing and delivering a learning uh, material. The third uh, player are construction organizations from one man show uh, or one woman show up to uh, you know, large uh, organizations. These uh, construction organizations include all designers, contractors, owners, project managers, facility managers. They play, of course, uh, the key role in implementing uh, new systems and processes. Now, a fourth uh, player is the individual practitioner or the student, uh, which is different to the organization or construction organization because as an individual uh, or individuals, uh, they play, play uh, an important role in the diffusion in learning, in, in, in adoption, in, in you know, conducting activities, I need to be identified uh, separately because they carry, we carry all of us, carry both uh, individual responsibilities and as part of a, an organization or association. The fifth player is uh, software uh, developers. Um, like uh, Autodesk or Nimicheck uh, or Trimble, these are the, you know, the, provide the, the software, which are very important, of course, key to, to any BIM adoption, and they can be identified as a separate player, and they carry uh, certain responsibilities uh, uh, with regards to BIM diffusion across a, a market. The sixth uh, player are uh, the technology service providers, which work, uh, of course, with technology developers, uh, or interface between technology developers and end users. In many instances, uh, they provide uh, the maintained relationship, they, they provide the uh, training, they provide uh, certain implementation services. Now, in the overlap between these uh, different um, fields, we've got uh, other players. Now, if you remember from, from the BIM fields video, that this overlap between different fields indicate uh, a couple of things. Uh, the most important one is that you've got uh, players which belong to one field, but are producing deliverables which are typically in the other field. For example, if we look at uh, AMCA or the you know Australian Institute of Architects or any of uh, these associations, uh, this uh, these associations are populated by players that come from the process field, but they do not uh, generate process deliverables. They generate policy deliverables. That is, for example, AMCA 
in Australia would uh, generate uh, policies for its uh, members, uh, would, would, uh, would, uh, would uh, lobby on their behalf, uh, the government and things like that. The eighth uh, player to be identified uh, with, within the overlap between the technology and process fields or communities of practice, like a Revit user group, Revit user group Archicad user group, or etc. These are the, the it's a community of individuals who have a shared interest, whether it's in let's say in BIM, or whether it's in digital innovation, or whether it is in let's say something like um, generative design. These share their experiences and knowledge and also act as a, as a separate player than individuals and organizations and play an important role in spreading uh, knowledge. The last player is the in the technology advocates. Uh, these are the associations who bridge the gap between policy and technology. And an excellent example of this would be Building Smart uh, with uh, their uh, model view definitions, uh, uh, with their, of course, IFC schemas and things like that. And they play a very important role in uh, facilitating the diffusion uh, of innovation, of BIM innovation within the market. So, these are the nine players which play an important role in BIM diffusion. Um, they, they have different, uh, you know, singular uh, responsibilities and common responsibilities uh, between them. To learn more about uh, this macro adoption model and other macro adoption models, please uh, refer to the journal uh, article uh, by pressing on the link here. Uh, you can also review the introductory uh, video by pressing here. And please uh, remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you.